Hi guys. So welcome to another CR webinar. Today we are going to discuss bold face questions. Um, I had wanted to discuss all the various types of uh, CR questions in our webinars. And uh, finally, I think we are there. So next week we'll look at something else. We are still left with mimic questions, but um, they're probably not really worth it because you may get one question, if at all, you may not even get that. They do take a whole lot of time, um, even though they're pretty simple. So then, uh, you know, I think you'll be able to understand it when you go through the video and the module of uh, mimic questions. So I'm not really going to worry about that. Um, it's not extremely important. And um, the other one is best completes. Now uh, you are likely to see one or two questions of that, but then that's not a separate question type, right? Best completes is just your uh, strength in questions or your weakened questions, for example, or your explain the paradox, et cetera, right? So they are just a different format of that. Like, for example, a DS question is just a different format of uh, testing your arithmetic skills, your set skills, et cetera. Similarly, best completes is just a different format. That's all. Instead of the question, you have a fill in the blank at the end. Yeah. All right. So uh, now before we start with today's uh, webinar, I would like to discuss one strategy point of CR. And this is because I came across this on uh, one of the forums today. And, you know, someone uh, has mentioned about it being a rule that, for example, past trends cannot um, forecast the future. Or, you know, if something happened in the past, that doesn't mean the same thing will happen in the future as well. And uh, fair enough, of course. So, but then look, don't try to make rules in critical reasoning. Yeah? That is not going to work. In case you're going to depend on rules, then you are setting yourself up for failure. Please keep in mind that what you really need to do is use logic, use reasoning, and develop an understanding by practicing a lot of official questions. Yeah, and those are the things that are going to help you solve these your questions properly. If you're making it easy for yourself, then it's not really going to work. Yeah, that is how G matters. You will have to invest yourself a whole lot. Now, uh, I was just talking about this trends thing. Look, I've mentioned the curriculum as well. You know, this, uh, you know, past trends cannot forecast the future. And then also, for example, if some plan worked in a neighboring uh, country, that doesn't mean it will work in this country as well. Fair enough. Absolutely. I understand that. It's not necessary. But look at what we do in strength and weaken questions. We try to support something a little more, right? Or we try to cast doubt on something. Now, for example, if I did X in the past and it did not work, you know, whatever my aim might have been. If I do the same X today, why do I think it is going to work? Isn't it? I mean, it, it makes sense that it won't, right? It is logical, right? There has to be something different this time. And if it is given that something is different this time, fair enough, right? But otherwise, there is no reason for me to say, okay, it didn't work in the past, but this time it will work, right? So I have to look at it logically, that what is my argument telling me? What exactly are the parameters of the argument? What exactly is the option telling me? What are the other options? I have to look at that also. Right. Similarly, that thing where we talk about, you know, this plan X worked really well in a neighboring country. So um, does that have an impact on whether the plan X will work in our country or not? You will get a hint from what the option is saying. For example, if they are to be made comparable in case it is relevant, then the option will tell you that, um, you know, it is a similar sized country or, you know, uh, with similar parameters, then you get to know that the author wants you to consider it as an important information, that it is relevant to your current case as well. Fair enough, right? If let's say something worked in another country, there is a probability that will work here as well, right? It does improve the probability that will work here as well, provided the two countries are comparable isn't it? So that is why I say use your logic, use your reasoning. Every question is going to be different. The context of the question is going to be very important. Don't try to go by rules. We used, I used to say the same thing on sentence correction as well. And I'm going to repeat the same thing on critical reasoning as well. There are no rules. Yeah, it all depends on context. We have enough rules in quant, right? Why do you want those in verbal as well? Isn't it? Okay. Um, 
Now we can start with our uh, boldface questions. Before we do, let me just give you three important points that we need to keep in mind in boldface questions. One, we need to break down the structure of the argument, which we do in every question type, right? We say, okay, these are the premises. This is what this sentence is doing, and this is a conclusion, etc. So we have to do the same for boldface as well. And of course, that will tell us what the boldface statements, uh, what role are they playing, obviously. Then often in bold phase questions, you have two positions. Not always, there are enough questions without that, but you have two positions. That is, for example, the you know popular opinion could be given or opinion of someone else could be given. And then the author would be giving his own opinion. So there could be uh, two sets of premises and conclusion. That also, once we break down the structure, we will uh, ensure that we separate them out, right? And then finally, one more point, yeah, I was in um, relation with the, mm, what is the relation of the whole phase statements with the conclusion of the argument? That's another thing that you have to keep in mind. You have to ensure that you figure out that the whole phase statements, you know, are they supporting the argument or are they against the argument? That is, when I say are they supporting the argument, supporting the conclusion of the author, right? Not another conclusion. If there are two positions, then not the other person's position. But when we say that statement one is, let's say, supporting the argument, that means that it is supporting the position of the author, the conclusion of the entire argument, right? All right, so these are three points that we're going to keep in mind. Um, let's start with some questions now. I'll share my screen. So um, I'm guessing you would know how we run the webinars. I'm going to share uh, a question with you. I'll give you a couple of minutes to go through it, and then we'll discuss it together. And then um, once, you know, we are done discussing it, you can ask me any queries you have. I'll wait for a minute or so. Yeah, let's take a look at it now. All right. Delta Products Inc. has recently switched at least partly from older tech using fossil fuels to new tech powered by electricity. Okay, so this is something which has happened recently. Yeah? It looks like context. We'll think about what, you know, what else. Now, it's, it's a bit of a problem in case it's context because, um, you know, what is the structure of the argument? As in what role does it play in the argument? That It's kind of hard to say, right? But we'll see. All, right. uh, all it tells us is that Delta products has recently switched from older tech using fossil fuels to new tech powered by electricity. Okay. The question has been raised whether it can be concluded that for a given level of output, Delta's operation now causes less fossil fuel to be consumed than it did formerly. Okay, so he's saying this is what a question is being raised, whether we can say that now Delta is using less fossil fuel than before, just than before, right? The answer clearly is yes, since. Now the structure of the um, argument is clear to me, right? The, what is this? The answer clearly is yes, this is where the author is giving me his opinion. So then this is the conclusion. This underlined part is the conclusion. The answer clearly is yes. This is what he wants to tell me. This is what the author's opinion is, right? This is what his claim is. All right. And so, look, you know, I wanted to be sure that this is the part which is boldface. And why? Because you have to be very careful about what exactly is boldface, right? What exactly is the part? Like, for example, in case I would have said that the boldface starts from here, yeah? Then the conclusion would have become a part of my boldface, right? But the boldface does not start from here. It starts from here since the, so since will anyway give me a premise, right? Here, after since, he is going to try to support his conclusion. Okay. Since the amount of fossil fuel used to generate the electricity needed to power the new tech is less than the amount needed to power the older tech, provided that the level of output is held constant. So he's telling us that, you know, look, the conclusion is this, the answer clearly is yes, but the content of the conclusion has been given to me in the previous statement. The question has been raised whether it can be concluded that what is the content of the conclusion? For a given level of output, Delta's operation now causes less fossil fuel to be consumed than it did formerly. The answer clearly is yes, is in a way giving you the conclusion. If you were to write down the conclusion over here in one statement, what would you say? 
what is it that the author wants to tell us? He wants to tell us that for a given, you can't say the conclusion is the answer clearly is yes, right? It makes no sense. No one knows what the question was, what the answer is. So the answer is yes, doesn't make any sense, right? That is not the conclusion. The conclusion is, what, what is the thing that the author wants to tell us? For a given level of output, what he wants to tell us is this. Delta's operations now cause, Delta's operation now causes less fossil fuel uh, to be consumed, to be consumed than it did formerly. So that before, right? I'm just... So then this is the conclusion. This is what the author wants to tell us. He says, for a given level of output, Delta's operation now causes less fossil fuel to be consumed than before. This is what he's trying to tell us, his conclusion. The premise is, since the amount of fossil fuel used to generate the electricity now, so he's saying the fossil fuel that we use now to generate the electricity which runs the Delta's tech is less. So let's say in case we were using 60 tons per day of fossil fuel formerly with the older tech, now we are using only 40 tons of fossil fuel to generate electricity and this electricity is enough to work on the new tech and produce the same output, same level of output. Right? So this is my premise. This is supporting this statement that for a given level of output, D's operation now causes less fossil fuel to be consumed than before. What about this BF1? The Delta products has recently switched at least partly from older tech to new tech powered by electricity. This is also a premise now. Note that this is not a context, right? This is a premise. Why? Because my conclusion only says that for a given le level of output, now D causes, uses less fossil fuels. Then it gives me how, you know, then it explains to me why. It says because Delta has switched partly from older tech to new tech, which is powered by electricity, and fossil fuels used to make this electricity are, are lower. You, you need, you know, less fossil fuel to make this electricity, right? So for this conclusion, basically your BF1 as well as BF2, they both become premises. Does that make sense? Yeah? All right. So uh, let's look at the options then. Uh, in the argument, the two, yeah. A, the first identifies the content of the conclusion of the argument. Look, he's talking about the content of the conclusion. Where is the content of the conclusion? For a given level of output, we said that, right? This is the content of the conclusion. The answer is clearly yes, is the given conclusion, right? This statement is, but the actual content lies in the previous statement, right? So my BF1 is certainly not the content of my uh, conclusion. So this is incorrect. Yeah. B. The first provides support for the conclusion of the argument. Fair enough. The second identifies the content of that conclusion. No, we said both provide support to the conclusion. The first states the position that the argument opposes. No, we said that the first supports the argument, right? Supports the conclusion. Each provides evidence that calls the conclusion of the argument into question. Okay, each provides evidence. Good enough. I was happy with this. But that calls the conclusion of the argument into question. That means it weakens my argument. No, both are supporting the argument. Each provides support for the conclusion of the argument. Good enough. This is what we were looking for, right? Quite a few points over here in this question. One about the conclusion and the content of the conclusion, right? Also, how we might start off feeling that something is context. I would have thought that the BF1 is context. But then once we separate out the conclusion, then we see that it is actually providing data which helps uh, strengthen the conclusion. Basically, he is showing you know, why for a given level of output, D's operation now causes less fossil fuel to be consumed than before. Why? Because D has switched to new tech which uses electricity and fossil fuel used for to make this electricity is less. Okay. So both of them act as premises for the conclusion. Okay. That's a, it's a good question.